25 years and he has extensive he has extensive experience in research and innovation and uh, in the area of FNSSA and in particular has been heading in Sirad a number of uh, a number of functions and activities and uh, in particular uh, in connection to the European African relation he is uh, within part of the European African uh, high level policy dialogue working groups for food nutrition security and sustainable agriculture uh, and innovation and he currently coordinates the H2020 project named LEAP4 FNSSA and which is responsible for organizing uh, the means to set up a partnership between Europe and Africa in the domain of agriculture research and more specifically today in connection to bringing the private sector at large on board. Monsieur Philippe Tignan, please, the floor is yours. Um, okay. th thank you, Dora. Shall I, um, shall I share my screen or, or will you... Uh... The, screens are, the screens are loaded. So I can... Can you see my? Uh... Yes, Philip, we can see it very yes, well. Yes, we see it. Okay, thank you. So thank you for this um, for this invitation to be part and and sorry. I with the, uh, the heads of the, uh, of the IRC in, in Egypt and uh, also in connection with, uh, with NASRO. I mean, what I will try to do is um, give you some of the uh, policy background behind this uh, partnership between Europe and Africa on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. So setting this uh, policy background, also looking at the uh, proposal to establish a bicontinental platform, but trying to also always to look at what's the angle and is relevant for institutions from the private sector. I'll sit on this one. I think in this, in this slide, that's the summary of this policy background between Europe and Africa. You probably all know that the, uh, the partnership between the two unions started many years ago in fact, before, before 2010, it was uh, organized around what we used to call the JIS, the Joint Africa EU strategy. And in this strategy, there was a specific pillar on the collaboration in research and innovation. What is interesting is that very recently, in 2020, just last year, there was this uh, new communication, EU Africa towards a comprehensive strategy. Um, and in this, so at the right part of the slide, in this strategy, the domain which is of interest to us, uh, the domain of research and innovation, doesn't appear in the five priorities, but in fact it appears within the priority three, sustainable growth and jobs. And here is already uh, an indication of the relevance of Research and innovation is there because it's the engine to sustain growth and to produce jobs. And that, of course, needs to link with the private sector. The domain of agriculture, in fact, is embedded in the first pillar, the green transition, uh, also sometimes called as green transformation. So agriculture, energy, and a few other fields are in this domain of a green transition. So what we are discussing today how research and innovation creates growth and jobs and how research and innovation in the field of agriculture and food is also part of this green transition is really at the heart of the EU-AU policy dialogue. 
they, I think in the document that you have received, you, you, you had this introduction of this, uh, um, uh, this thematic on food and nutrition security and sustainable agriculture. I mean, at the heart of it, there's a roadmap, which was uh, actually approved by both union in 2016 for the 10 years. So we are sort of halfway uh, in 2021. 20, uh, and, and this roadmap is um, supported by a number of policy dialogue, but also of, uh, um, of projects and being implemented, lead for FNSSA being, being one of them. In this roadmap, um, there are four main priority areas, sustainable intensification, agriculture and food system for nutrition, expansion, improvement of agricultural markets and trade. And I'm, I'm sure that all the participants today probably recognize that these three domains are still are very relevant. Uh, and probably especially the questions of markets and trade, which has received less attention in recent years, uh, but it, it's really developing fast, also as part of the African free trade, uh, the Africa free trade area. And there are a number of cost-cutting issues, uh, innovation, um, enabling policies being example of those cutting cost cutting issues, um, investing in research infrastructure as well. This um, roadmap also indicates uh, a number of important criteria for selecting within those broad priority areas the research topic. And I want to just to to go a little bit in details on this one because I think this is very relevant to the discussion we had today. I, mean, I think I'll start with the bullet point number two. It's research which is contributing to impact, to significant improvement in the economies, in the well-being, in the resilience in, in both continents. So here we are discussing about less academic research, but more how research produces knowledge which is mobilized to thrive development, to, con to be linked to the process of, of innovation. So that's, I think, um, in the situation for the private sectors, that's probably why you are more interested to link to research is how it will also sustain your performance, how it will sustain your business model. So with this notion of impact. Uh, other elements, um, partnership between the two unions means that both sides uh, should have research capacities in the topic which are being, uh, being chosen. Uh, the research should be looked at in a way that it's going to be produce output and outcomes scalable to the regional and, and, uh, and continental side. And this must be complementary to uh, what already exists, bilateral and multilateral collaboration. But I'd like to come back to the first bullet point. It's, it says relevance of the research domain to African and European priorities. And here it means that when we are looking at um, areas of collaboration in this partnership is really thinking of a joint interest for both Europe and for Africa. And in your discussion today, I think that should be probably also at the heart of what you're thinking. As a private sector um, um, companies, industry, I know that when you look for alliances with other uh, institutions or other companies, this is always with the idea that if the collaboration is launched, it's because it's going to be win-win. There is going to be something of interest for both sides. And there is this is very much at the heart of the alliances um, between private companies, between private companies and the research. And this is really key in this partnership, looking at how... which is uh, supporting this, this partnership and really with a number of, of partners, many of them are represented today in this uh, conference. Uh, in this virtual conference, uh, and I, I thank them for all for their, their support and uh, contributions. And really the aim of um, Lib5 and SSA is to say, yes, there is at the moment a part, an EU-AU dialogue, uh, 
uh, on research and innovation on food and nutrition security is at the top of this slide. There are a number of activities, very diverse activities uh, being implemented and that's a sort of this cloud of activity at the bottom. But what we are missing is something in the middle and that's what we are um, thriving to establish a bi-continental platform that will create this link um, between the policy dialogue and the activities on the ground and between all these initiatives uh, on the grounds uh, being uh, led by the diversity of, of stakeholders uh, in this domain of food and nutrition security but also connecting to other domains which are uh, have got connections who have got uh, liaison with food and nutrition security for instance uh, the question of innovation is is really enabling policies on innovation is broader and and as was a uh, was introduced by Dora. على الابتكار في هذا المجال سوف يؤدي الى innovation and I, I happen to be sitting in both groups and it's interesting to look at how innovation that the word innovation has got different meanings in Europe, but it also has sometimes different meanings between Europe and Africa. So first we have to get a sort of clear mutual understanding on, on what we mean about it. I'm sure that will be elements that you will discuss uh, today. But So the aim of the project is to establish this, this platform, making this link both horizontally and, and vertically as, as represented in this graph. Uh, that platform will create synergies between all the programs and, and activities uh, already happening. It will facilitate the contacts with the, uh, uh, with the institution looking for partners. And, and I know that it's often a question which I, I receive, especially from a uh, small and medium scale company or startup in the private sector is I'm looking for a partner who has got this type of knowledge. I'm looking for a partner who can help me to develop my business model towards those other part, other region of the world and so on. And it's reducing this hassle of identifying the right partners will be an, uh, an objective of this platform. And of course, the one is also showcasing solutions that work, solutions that are already built up by the different type of, of stakeholders. Uh, there are solutions coming from research, there are solutions coming from private sectors, there are solutions coming from the policy areas, and all of them have to be brought together if we want to have significant impact. So this will be the main activities of the platform, synergies between program, uh, clustering, uh, facilitating access to information, to contacts, to uh, information on funding, and uh, showcasing solutions. Uh, the way when I say platform, and I know that sometimes there's, there's a misunderstanding, this is an operational platform. We are not talking about a virtual online platform. The word is being used many times. Uh, it's not an online platform. It's a real platform which is built by institutions who wants to work together and joint efforts with his aim, reducing farm plantation, supporting... ...that we have chosen for initiating this collaboration is what we called an international research consortium. I don't think I want to enter into many details here. What is important is, it's based on the commitment of the founder of the institution who decide to found this platform, they are the one uh, who will uh, create it. And that platform will be sustained as long as its founding members see uh, added value, that it creates added value. What is interesting is that a few international research consortium already exist. Some of them like Star it has have been existing for more than 10 years. So it works and it can last, so it can be uh, sustainable. It can actually even attract, in the case of, of Star it has, uh, it attract funding, for instance, from the EU, but also from the Gates Foundation. So what is important now is um, um, if we want to create this platform, it means that maybe some of the participants today, uh, some of the institutions you, re you represent are um, sharing this vision, sharing this idea that yes, 
by working together, by aligning our activity, we can uh, produce more. And that's what we are, in fact, in this event, listening to you, how you would like this uh, uh, to join the efforts in, in, in building up this platform, but we would like also to hear from you uh, how you would be interesting to be part of this uh, process and how you would like this uh, platform also to be governed. Um, the question of governance is, is open. Uh, nothing is, is decided yet. And there are difficulties or things to be considered on how the diversity between stakeholders, but also the diversity between regions is represented in the platform. There are diverse questions in the different regions of Africa, in the different regions of Europe. So we need how this could be covered. There are also diverse point of view from different stakeholders, whether you are from research, from the policy background, from the private sectors. So uh, I hope that your discussion today will help to frame how this platform built on your willingness to join uh, will, uh, will be governed and will, will be organized. So with these few words, I'll uh, hand over the floor to um, Dr. Suleiman. I hope he's been able to, to join. And uh, I mean, I close with this slide. Here you've got the contacts, both coordination of a project and the uh, info contact on the uh, on Leap Life. And as I say, look at our website and uh, then we're waiting to hear from you and we'll be open to, uh, to uh, uh, liaise with you in building this uh, this um, platform. I'm going to stop my sharing my screen and I over to you, uh, Dora, and and thank you for for the invitation. Yes, thank you very much, Philippe. Uh, that was indeed extremely useful to uh, really highlight what is meant by uh, such an initiative and enable our uh, friends and colleagues from the private sector to understand how they can relate to it, which is the purpose of this workshop. And now uh, we wish to um, uh, introduce uh, Dr. Shirin Asim who is going to represent today uh, Dr. Mohamed Suleiman, who unfortunately has been called by uh, our Minister of Agriculture for a very important meeting with the foreign delegation. So uh, we will, however, present briefly the bio of Dr. Mohamed Suleiman before that Dr. Shirin Asim does the, uh, present his, uh, his words. As you can see, Dr. Mohamed Suleiman has a very impressive uh, bio. Uh, I'm not going to read all of that to you. Uh, enough to mention that uh, he is, his area of specialization is crops, particularly maize, wheat, and uh, he is member of a very large number of advisory councils and uh, organizations. Uh, the, among the most important ones to mention today, considering our audience, is the fact that Dr. Suleiman is the national coordinator of the Minister of Agriculture and Land Reclamation in Prima, which is the uh, prime uh, Euro-Mediterranean Euro program in the area of uh, food and agriculture. He is also on the board of Siam Bari, one of the members of uh, Leap for FNSSA. And he is as well on member of the board of directors of FARA, the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa. Uh, what maybe we should mention here is that uh, the uh, sub-regional area of FARA, and that you are going to see in the presentation, which, re, uh, which represents North Africa, is named NASRO, and it was first initiated in Cairo in 2009, and with a number of countries, you'll see this now, 
And Dr. Suleiman is presently chairing NASRO in his capacity as chairing the Agricultural Research Center of Egypt, which is our national and core agricultural research agency. Uh, Dr. Suleiman is, uh, has published 37 researchers and supervised a number of uh, PhD. And I believe that without further ado, further ado we, would, we will invite Dr. Shirin Asim, who is the, his, de, his deputy for research. She is deputy chairman for and head of research in the Agricultural Research Center. And uh, Dr. Shirin Asim, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dora. Thank you uh, for inviting yes. us to participate with you in this important yes. workshop. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to participate with you. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Mohamed Suleiman, the uh, chairman of the Agricultural Research Center in Egypt. Uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, Dr. Shirin. Could yes. we ask the participants to close their mic? Because we hear sound in the background. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. My, uh, is my sound is clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, again, uh, it's my pleasure to participate with you on behalf of Dr. Mohamed Suleiman, the president of the Agricultural Research Center in Egypt. Uh, my name is Shirin Azim. I am the Vice President of the Agricultural Research Center for uh, Research Affairs. Um, uh, actually, it's, uh, this is an uh, important workshop. It's on EU-AU uh, research, uh, research and Innovation Partnership on Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture. Uh, regarding the science agenda for agriculture in Africa, uh, actually, as uh, uh, Dora mentioned, NASRO has been launched in Cairo in 2009 as the new North African sub-regional organization. Uh, it is a part of Africa, of, of, uh, of FARA, uh, which is the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa, established and sponsored by the African Union. Together with the other sub-regional organizations representing the other parts of Africa, CORAF, uh, ASARICA, and uh, CCAR, uh, DISA. Uh, so these are, these are all uh, the, uh, the forums uh, included in the forum of FARA. Uh, gathering initially Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Mauritania, and Tunisia, uh, Nastro is presently chaired by Dr. Mohamed Suleiman in his capacity as chairman of the Agriculture Research Center. Uh, the science agenda for agriculture in Africa, S3A, adopted by FARA as the core of its FNSSA policies, aims at mainstreaming science in agriculture to lead social and economic transformation in Africa. Uh, the S3 concept, which is connecting science to transform Afri uh, agriculture in Africa, uh, uh, has a vision to, uh, uh, that is by 2030, Africa ensures its food and nutrition security and becomes a, recon a recognized global scientific player in agriculture and food systems and uh, the world's bread basket. Implement the Comprehensive Africa Agriculture Development Program uh, according to Malabo Declaration and in cooperation with NEPAD. Focus on the theme connecting science with the needs and opportunities in Africa agriculture, such as sustainable productivity and in, uh, intensification in major farming systems, food systems and value chains, agriculture, biodiversity, and natural resource management, including modern genetics uh, and genomics techniques, climate change mitigation and urbanization challenges, improving livelihood of rural communities. The North Africa-Europe Alliance private sector initiative, uh, which is meeting the objectives of uh, uh, SS3A in Africa. It is strengthening the institutional systems of science in, for agriculture in Africa at national and regional level, 
addressing the poor linkages between research, education, ad advisory services, and private sector at large, promoting global partners, uh, partnerships in science, sustainable financing of the science agenda for Africa, targeting the uh, uh, practitioners uh, and their linkage to the research communities. Agriculture com transformation in Africa will not happen without realizing the potential of women and young people. The Africa-Europe story born on the Mediterranean shores include the context uh, of the setup of a bi-continental AU-EU multi-stakeholder partnership platform for FNSC research and innovation. North Africa benefits from major assets. It, its past and present know-how and linkages as privileges EU partners at all economic, social, cultural, and agricultural levels. Through their EU Mid, uh, mid joint heritage and ongoing joint interests and policies. This positioning can be the basis to build upon, facilitate the testing of a sub regional approach in North Africa as component of the bicontinental platform, taking the region as uh, the basis but open the rest of the continent. National financial commitment by the government is key to unlock support from, uh, from public and private investors. Uh, the role of private sector will grow as new technologies enter market and value-added processing opportunities. Private sector innovations, mobile banking, e-commerce, e crop insurance, and digital agriculture have made already transformative changes for smallholders in a number of African countries, and still more to come. High rates of return on investment in science for agriculture have been shown consistently in several global studies. And this is, uh, for example, in the PARA reports uh, in 2009-2010. In North Africa, FNSSA ranks among the priority investment sectors, such as the Agri-Tech pillar for Egypt uh, Soviet Sovereign Fund, the forestry initiative led by the Morocco Civil Society Organization and North African members leading roles in EU Mediterranean FNSSA. Uh, the Agriculture Research Center and NASO extend their support to the North Africa Europe Alliance private sector initiative and look forward to the Africa Europe platform and IRC. Uh, at, uh, uh, to, to conclude my uh, presentation or the presentation of the Agriculture Research Center, uh, it's, uh, we are most uh, welcome to uh, collaborate and uh, be a part of uh, the new alliance for uh, North Africa, EU, AU, and uh, partnership between uh, Africa and Europe. And uh, we are, uh, as we share the continent with Africa, so uh, uh, always Africa is for Africans, and we are uh, the first one to solve our problems and share our uh, priorities to, and challenges so uh, we are uh, welcome to participate in your initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shirin. Uh, Thank you. It's, it's really very interesting to see how starting from different points of view, different angles, the uh, interests are the same. And, uh, and hopefully that means that the understanding and the cooperation will be fruitful. Uh, 